Remember being a kid when you would just sit around and dig in the dirt and most of us had Tonkas or something like that, but you always played with something in the dirt. And, uh, you know, well, if, if you grew up in the 70s, you were probably playing with one of these. Uh, I was not growing up in the 70s, so I was not playing with these quite yet. Uh, these are Mini Max. These are from Z Toys. Also known as Zilmex and also um, Intex Recreation in the later part of the years. Uh, Minimax came on around mid, mid to late 70s. Um, there was a bunch of different brands that they were doing for all the different areas of die cast. Everything was all separated and whatnot. Uh, Dyna Flights and uh, Dynamites and all kinds of stuff and pay setters and stuff like that. Um, so, Zill Enterprises is who, it's the parent company of Z-Toys. Uh, they were established around 1962-ish, 1963. Um, they produced a lot of different products under different names. They were essentially the same products, though. Um, you could get Z-Toys and Zillmex at the same time, for instance. Um, it was very, very interesting, I thought. Um... They kind of went through the 90s and then they they got sold off and whatnot but um you know these were these were some cool stuff back in the day they were made made in hong kong uh lots of moving features you know really cool models they didn't have the greatest quality uh this first one's basically just a shovel tractor uh just a single shovel boom on the front in orange um this card's actually in pretty good shape it's unpunched um there's a lot of different models that came out over the years. Um, there are a few models I don't have. Um, I don't have the Wrecker. I also don't have the moving truck. And I don't have one of the tractors sealed. I do have one of the tractors loose. Although it is a little rough shape. So that probably won't be a part of this showcase. We're just going to show off the card carded stuff I got. Uh, this next one is a uh, open open top uh, front end loader. This is a pretty common piece of construction equipment in the in the 60s and the 70s. They started moving into more covered up stuff in the 80s and stuff like that. This was this is what you see on the construction site all the time. Um, this one doesn't have as much moving features as your typical one. Um, but the boom does go up and down and then the dump it dumps it does have the detail in there for the seat get that to focus and the steering wheel um pretty pretty common looking wheel right it's totally hot wheels use the same type of wheel uh, although much much fatter um later on down the road definitely after the the late 70s um, we're going to keep going with front end loader style. Um, that's Those are the only two orange ones I have. Now, these are not um, necessarily in any type of order. Um, however, these were all from the same assorted, or assorted release, which is pretty cool. And I've actually assembled these completely separate from each other over the years. Um, a decent chunk I got together, but then the rest of them have been here and there. Uh, so typical front end loader. This one does have a, a plow front attachment on it in yellow. Um, again, the card's really nice. This one is literally punched twice. <laughs> uh, so I can't say it's not punched, but cool stuff. It does have the turning feature in there, just like all front end loaders should. And the front piece is metal. A lot of times they're plastic. Uh, we're going to go on to some tracked stuff. This is your typical Caterpillar dozer. Um, in like a, a little bit of a darker yellow. Now, the tracks and stuff are rubber. They do roll if it was to be opened. However, based on 80s materials, I would assure you that if I took this out and started rolling them, the tracks would probably crack, um, which is unfortunate. But 
it's pretty cool. It still has the seed in there. It's a separate piece for the seed. You know, just a little bit of detail to it. The casting itself has a ton of detail to it. Um, these castings were pretty freaking fragile. Um, they were totally meant for kids. Kids would destroy these instantly because there's a ton of plastic parts on it. These were not meant for the ruggedness of kids. They were totally made for kids, but, you know, being in that... 70s era the, the quality just was not there uh we got a different style of dozer here um this one's more of a front end loader i guess you could say with that dozer body uh this is in yellow it's i wish that the bucket was up in the blister i'm not really sure how it got turned down but um you know all of these are in really good shape the cards are in really good shape which is which is really nice i'm very happy um there's a number of them that are unpunched which is a little frustrating because I try to hang them up on the walls. So, but at the same time, I mean, the, the, the punch is, I mean, the, the punch is irrelevant. You know, whether it's in there or not, it's not a big deal. Uh, we keep going. I'm going to go on to, I'm going to the last dozer I got here. This one's also in yellow. Uh, this is your, your typical uh, D11, D9, D11 Caterpillar dozer. Uh, with the with the scraper attachment on the back end, um, there's no interior. Um, it's just molded metal, and it still has all your typical details and whatnot. Um, I really feel like the level of detail they went through for the cheap stuff back in the day. You know, models like these that had a lot of working features. You get Hot Wheels and Matchbox, which had standard working features, not really that big a deal. Uh, you would find a Hot Wheels dozer like this, for instance, but then the bo the boom may or the uh, blade may move, but then that wouldn't have tracks. It'd have wheels, or it would have tracks, but then the bucket or the uh, spade would move or whatever. And uh, you know th these these old school ones, they just this was typical stuff. Um. We're going to keep going with the construction side because there are some stuff in here that's not construction. Um, sorry, guys. Trying to get that to come down a little bit. Uh, so I have two versions of this one. Um, and in case anybody's wondering, these are 1981 copyright, in case you're curious. Uh, these are older than I am. Um, so this is a Caterpillar scraper. Um, there's a couple different versions of these. The later versions that came out, Motormax uh, ended up with a lot of these castings. Motormax uh, made models with these castings. Um, as a matter of fact, let me grab one real quick. I'll show you guys. Real time, real time. So just real quick. So here's the Motormax. Now, I don't know how Motormax acquired these per se, but just with the jumbling of businesses and stuff throughout the 80s and 90s, um, this is just kind of the way it worked. So this is actually the same exact casting as this guy. Um, just modified to make it a little bit easier to assemble and a little bit cheaper to assemble. So a couple more pieces were converted to plastic and whatnot. Um, but just, just something cool right there. There's the uh, models right there. You'll notice a lot of those are the same castings. They just repurposed them. I would love to get this whole series. I'm still looking for them. Kind of hard to find. All right. Here is the other... So this one has actually got the Caterpillar brand name on it. Now, my thought process would be, obviously once the Caterpillar name came off of it, you no longer have to pay for the name to be on there. So that's probably what happened. Now, what you'll notice is that this one was sold under Z-Toys. This one was sold under Intex. But they're both Minimax. They're both Z-Toys. Um, and I'm not really sure the purpose of this. They uh, look at the, They even have the same 
uh, UPC on it. So my assumption would be uh, maybe they were used to budget things differently. Say, for instance, they're selling it to Walmart versus selling it to a drugstore versus selling it to a gas station or whatever. That's probably what happened. That would be my assumption to, to just jump around on the brand names. But just something cool. All right, we're going to switch away from a construction vehicle real quick. Because this is about as far away from construction as I got in the Minimax. This fire truck. Um, now the boom, the ladder does raise up, turns around. It's got a two-stage ladder, so there's two pieces in there. Um, this is a little bit of an older casting. I believe this casting was also used... If I remember correctly, I think this casting was used by Kidco. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it was used used by Kidco. Um, just really cool stuff, man. Just really cool stuff. I really, really like this stuff. It's got a metal base. It's a metal body. This one was a little bit more industrial, I guess you could say. This is a little bit more kid-friendly as far as, as surviving. But, uh, you know, still, they're going to break that, that ladder off. It's plastic. It's totally plastic. All right, we'll go back to a construction vehicle. Now, this particular style of crane has been around forever. I mean, every cheap company's made something very, very similar to this. Um, the cool thing about this is, is it's it's several pieces. So you'll have your metal chassis. It is a uh, uh, plastic base, but then the cab is metal, and then the uh, operator cab is also metal, and then the boom is plastic, and it's got a two-stage boom on it. It's pretty cool. I really like it. Uh, this particular model, as you can see, the cab, unfortunately, is not properly riveted. But luckily, since it's in the card, life will go on. I don't think there's a brand on this. It would probably be a uh, Grove, Grove crane, I guess. I know I butchered it. What's any construction site without a cement truck, right? Cement truck. Everybody's got to have a cement truck. The cool thing about this particular casting, and I really wish I had one loose to show you, uh, but this is just like the old school Tomicas where the cab folds forward. It's got the engine detail in there. You can see a little bit on the back side there where the engine is behind the cab. Obviously, the drum rolls. It's it's really cool. It's really cool. I, I really like these models. Every time I find these in like the scrap bins or the dump bins where everybody throws all the beat up cars and whatnot in there um the cab is always gone it's always broken off because it's just a little uh rivet pin that holds it in on both sides but again this this was this was cheap back in the day this is not cheap to manufacture like that now also you gotta you gotta fuel up all your vehicles you gotta fuel up your dozer you gotta fill up your front end loaders Put some mobile mobile gas in there. Uh, that decal is actually in really good shape. Uh, sometimes I find these in blisters and they're quite yellowed um, or the adhesive has completely been worn off and then the label is actually just kind of in the blister, which is unfortunate. Um, again, I wish I had one that was loose because you actually can pull a hose out of the tank on this one, which is pretty cool. Um, it actually shows you that on the back of the card, which is pretty sweet. I got one more for you guys. Of course, a forklift. Because everybody's got a forklift, right? This forklift is one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Um, I've worked in warehouse industry for a very long time. And... Because of that, I've gone a little partial to forklifts. Um, now, I showed you guys in the oddball box the other day, the dynamites. Now, the dynamites came after Minimax. Still your Zilmex, still your Z-Toys. Still the same castings now you can just tell by the looking on the surface here that the quality of the red one is much much better than this one on on the left side now that doesn't mean that it's crappy or anything per se it's just 
I wanted to showcase these castings were used forever, forever. These castings were probably used for about, I would estimate, 10 to 12 years in many different formats, different lines. Um, oh, one other thing. One other thing. Sorry, guys. I forgot that I had this, too. There it is again. Same casting. Same cast. We have all three using the same casting. Very, very, very different years. Uh, that Mini Max, 1981. Dynamites, I believe that was 1994. Um, the... Motor Max, I believe, is 2000. Uh, the Motor Max is pretty new. It's pretty new. Same casting over and over and over. So, just insane. It's insane how long they use these castings. But, that's cool, though, because I like having all these different versions. But, anyways. Uh, just wanted to throw out the Mini Max. I know I talked to them a little bit. Talked about them a little bit. Here and there. Um... Hopefully there's a lot of other guys checking this out that love construction stuff. That's, that's really where I, I thrive in my collection. I love construction equipment. Um, you can even see some, some cat stuff in the back, some stuff over there. Um, obviously that stuff's got to come out of this room because this is a room 164. But anyways, we're going to roll through. Um... If I get some more Minivacs, I will definitely bring these up. Or if I get some more Dynamites. Um, I do have a buddy who's got some stuff to look forward to here in a couple of days that might have something for me. But I'll keep you guys up to date if that's going to happen. Anyways, I'm going to roll out with today's video. Be sure to check out my other videos. Subscribe. You know the drill. We all know the drill. Anyways, take it easy, guys. We'll see you later.